So the last part of this, like I said, eventually you'll have one rolling problem is the molecular formula. So you have to have the empirical formula to do the molecular formula, and you have to have the percent composition to do the empirical formula. So eventually you'll have just one big rolling problem. So molecular formula, it may be the same as the empirical formula, or it may be a multiple of it. So for example, you may have a molecular formula of CH2, I'm sorry, you have an empirical formula of CH2, and if you put a multiplier of two in front of it, you now get C2H4. So X is gonna be a multiplier, the empirical formula is gonna be a compound with subscripts, and then if it's anything greater than one, your molecular formula will be different than your empirical formula. Um, and the multiplier will be a whole number, one through whatever. You have to know the molar mass of the starting compound, which I have to give you. And that's also a good way to check yourself at the end. You also have to know the molar mass of the empirical formula. So if you get your empirical formula wrong, you're going to get your molecular formula wrong. And you probably got your empirical formula wrong because your percent composition was wrong. So once again, just be careful. Um, so for right now, we're going to start with the empirical formula steps so I can show you the full process to get to the molecular. But technically, this is just two more steps after the empirical. So first example, find the molecular formula if a compound's molar mass is 220 grams per mole, and it is made up of 56.4% phosphorus and 43.7% oxygen. So we first, step one and two, have to do the empirical formula. So this is nothing new. So we said before that we can change the percent signs. Oops, let me get my black pen here. To grams. And then we go with that. So I have phosphorus. Changing it to moles. So I have to divide by the molar mass, the atomic mass. I get 1.82. And then oxygen. Two decimal places for all of your rounding is best. Okay, step one. Step two is then divide by the smallest number between the two. This obviously equals one. Dividing these gives me 1.5. Uh-oh. I can't say two, it's too far away. So I have to think what times 1.5 will give me very close to whole number. If I do 1.5 times 2, I get 3. Well, that's a whole number, so I can use that. But then I also have to do times 2 to this side. So now I get 1 times 2, so now I get 2. So that's going to be my ratio, 2 phosphorus to 3 carbon. So my empirical formula is P2O3. Okay, so that's, you already know how to do that. Now we have to use this for the molecular. So step three, determine the molar, molar mass of the molecular or of the empirical formula. So we said it's P2O3. So I've got two phosphorus times the atomic mass, three oxygen times its atomic mass, Add those together, and then get my empirical formula, molar mass to be 109.91 grams of moles. To determine the multiplier, you take the molecular formula, molar mass, over the empirical formula, molar mass. So if you look back in the problem, I'm going to go back a slide, here is my Molecular formula, molar mass. Divided by my empirical. And I get, let me check it. I want to give you the exact decimal I get. I get 2.00163774. I just wanna show you that all could look. It's very, very, very close to two, so I'm just gonna say two. So this is my multiplier. Two is my multiplier. So I put that out front, two times my empirical formula. 
So I now get my molecular formula is P4O6. Done. So that's the full problem. You can check this, okay? We said that the compound's molar mass is 220. Check it. You can make sure this is right. It's a very easy way to check yourself. So four phosphorus, six oxygen. Are all that together? I got 219.82. I would say that's pretty close to 220. So this is correct molecular formula. All right, let's try another one where it's a little bit iffy again with the, um, the ratio. So number two, find the molecular formula. If a compound's molar mass is 284 grams per mole and it is made up of 43.6% phosphorus and 56.4% oxygen. So I don't know the empirical formula. You technically will know that in some cases, but you gotta do that first. So empirical formula, I gotta do that first. So step one is to change grams to moles by dividing the gram amount given to you by the atomic mass of that element. Okay, now I have to divide by the smaller the numbers, so 1.41. Divide by 1.41 gives me 1. 3.53 divided by 1.41 gives me 2.5. Cannot round that up or down. You have to figure out what times this will give you an even, or it will give you a whole number. If I do it times 2, I get 5. That's an even, sorry, a whole number. Then I also have to do it over here. 1 times 2 is 2. So those are now going to give me my empirical formula. So my empirical formula is phosphorus, 2, oxygen, 5, because I just use the order that I, I'm given. Okay, that's the empirical. Now I have to figure out the new part, the molecular. So the first step is to find the molar mass of the empirical. Add everything together, two phosphorus and five oxygen. I get 141.89. The problem gives me the molecular formula molar mass, 284. Dividing those two, I get a very, very close to two. So my multiplier is two. So I take my multiplier times my empirical formula and I get P4O10. That is the molecular formula. You can check this. Take four P's plus 10 O's and it should be very close to 284. When I did it, I got 283.78. All right, let's try Let's try this one. So try this one on your own. I will tell you that you should get, this is gonna seem crazy, but they're big numbers. You should get this as your answer. And the molar mass should be very close. If you check it for this, it should be very close to the molar mass given to you in the problem. Okay, so try that on your own. The last one. Actually, this is a pretty challenging one. There's a lot of um, trick shifts with this one. So as long as you understood the first three, make sure you actually try that last one. 
I think you'll be good to go. Major thing is just remembering if that ratio doesn't fall in an easy place to round up or down, you have to multiply it, which changes your ratio. So eventually you're gonna have problems that are, you know, find the percent comp and then find the empirical and then find the molecular all for the same problem. So make sure you understand the first part to get the second part. Make sure you understand the second part to get the third part. That's it, chapter 9.3.